Hi there and welcome to 272analytics.com's tutorial on how to create a histogram in Stata. In order to do so we will work with the Census 13 data set which is already in Stata. If you just type in WebU Census 13 you can pull that up and I'm just going to enter edit so you can see what that is. This data set is about the population of states. So we have birth rate, population, median age, uh, region and some other information here and let's do this let's create a histogram for population being a continuous variable that is an excellent candidate to generate a histogram with and show you what that looks like the command in stata is hist or histogram you can also write the whole thing out uh, followed by the variable for which you're interested in the histogram and that command pulls this up so you know having a quick look at your histogram uh, it's not normally distributed looks like most states have um, a fairly small population and then there's a, there a tiny number of states here that are quite large uh, in population. So now having seen the basic histogram let's play around with it a little bit and show you what extra things can be done in Stata with that. So the first thing I've done let me show you my code here. I've done hist pop comma bin parentheses 10. I've created 10 bins and bins are essentially just categories here uh, columns within the histogram that give you more detail about the distribution. It starts to become more distinct when you add uh, the number of bins. And in order to show you that a little bit better, I'm going to go up from even 10 to 20. And there you can see that as I've gone up to 20 bins, this information started to become a lot more distinct than it was in our original histogram with the default bin. Um, there's a bunch of other really, really powerful stuff you can do in Stata with the histogram. You can use all kinds of the uh, conditional operators within Stata to alter that histogram. One thing I'm going to do here next is I'm going to create different histograms by region. And so notice what I've done with my code. I've just added by region at the end here and I push enter. And now I've actually gotten four histograms, one for the northeast, north, central, south, and west, which were the regions recognized in the data set. And I can actually see the histogram looks uh, you know, quite different here by region. Um, in particular, we can see in the west that most of the states are very, very small population states. Here in the northeast, we have some states quite to the right of the histogram, uh, indicating that this area has, has the most, uh, I guess, high population states. Uh, and then over here, um, most likely this is California, I don't know, but breaking breaking it up by region, you can actually start to see patterns that were not there in the original histogram. Something else I'm going to do is I'm going to change my number of bins down from 20 back to 6 because there was a lot of detail that was kind of unnecessary, I think, when we broke the histograms down by region. This is a much better looking chart in the sense that uh, you don't need all those bins going off to the right here when 6 kind of shows you um, the patterns that are of interest, I think. Um, one more thing I want to show you really quick for those of you working in APA format. Um, it is nice to be able to pull up a, a sort of black and white or shall we say white, black and gray uh, color scheme to pass APA compliance. And we do that with this little bit of code here, scheme. Scheme parentheses S1 mono. And what that does is it pulls up this kind of graph. Uh, so it looks a lot cleaner uh, than it normally does. Something we won't cover as much here, but um, I encourage you to play with is you can go to graph editor if you like. And then when you click within your histogram, you can actually change labels here. Uh, you can change NE to Northeast by typing it out. You can change the size uh, of these number labels down here so they fit better into a graph. You can, you can delete here where it says graphs by census region. All of that is pretty point and click. You use your select tool, you click within here uh, and you can do that. I'm not going to show you because they're just like innumerable things you can do. It's, it's amazing and, and it's very precise pinpoint control. Like you could go in there and I don't know, you could select this bar here for the West and make it gold and everything else would remain, you know, uh, black, white and gray. So the, the, the amount of things you can do is just amazing. It's just something that you do learn by playing with. I just want to make you aware that graph editor is something that's going to let you go in there 
and uh, and do that. Let's do a final little uh, operator here just to show you um, the power of this command. I'm going to do a histogram of population only for those states whose birth rate is above 200. And I mean, it, it, it's, it's not necessarily very informative in, in terms of a histogram, but it's just to show you that uh, in addition to the by command here, you can use the if command if something else is met, some other condition is met. Let's say that you're working with a very, very large data set. It's got 10,000 entries in it, and you only want a histogram for 500 of those entries where a certain condition is met. And that's where the if command comes in really handy. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was useful for you. Histograms are pretty much universally used whenever there are continuously distributed variables. Stata, as you've seen, has very simple and very powerful uh, tools for generating histograms uh, using subsets of the data uh, and giving you a lot of control over what the graphics look like, the colors, the text. And it's something that once you do kind of get your feet wet, I encourage you to play around you know, as much as you can, especially in the graph editor so you can see what the full capabilities are. I encourage you to go to 272analytics.com for access to our full tutorial of statistics guides. We have guides for Stata, R, SPSS, eViews, and Minitab. Uh, they're all free, and hopefully they're all informative to you. Uh, and finally, I do want to remind you that 272analytics.com is a consulting company. We work closely with students on any aspect, really, of quantitative data analysis ranging from methodology to actually running and interpreting your data. Our goal is to help you understand and get a story out of your data, give you graphs, give you a code, give you interpretations, so that you are then able to take that material and write a better chapter four, write a better chapter three. Uh, once you understand exactly what you're doing and you have your own data analysis in your hands, um, you're pretty much halfway to the uh, finish line of completing a quantitative uh, thesis or dissertation. Thank you so much and have a great day.